You are listening to the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. Now, in today's episode, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by listeners and viewers just like you. But the way we open the episode is with an introductory portion where we talk about current events, talk about ourselves, our favorite topic. Yeah, uh, my and favorite. We mention our sponsors. Today's intro portion was 49 minutes. After that, we got into the questions. So here's what went down in today's podcast. We open up by talking about Justin's discomfort. With being sentimental. Yeah. Uh, he's got to force oh. those feelings Ugh. down. Yucky. Then uh, Adam talked about a guy who stole a car in Oregon and then realized there was a baby in the car, brought the car back. Nice guy. Yeah. Uh, then good, we t- good morals. Then we talk about the stupid things we did as kids. A little confession time on the podcast. <laughs> uh, we talk about baby apps. Uh, we've been talking a lot about the leaps and uh, that our kids are going through as they grow up, and there's a few apps that help uh, you figure that out. Uh, then we talk about uh, Adam, excuse me, Justin losing power at his house because he lives up in the mountains and it's super windy. Yeah, and trees are flying everybody everywhere. Then we talk about Barstool and the Barstool Fund for small businesses and how Felix Gray, our favorite company of blue light blocking glasses, is working with them and donating ten percent of every purchase of a particular style of glass uh, glasses. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but if you go to their site, you can find out. But they do make Really, really great blue light blocking glasses. Uh, and if you listen to Mind Pump, you can actually go to the Mind Pump page. Go to felixgrayglasses.com. That's F E L I X G R A Y glasses.com forward slash Mind Pump. Um, then we talked about the mega millions uh, reaching almost a billion dollars. Dang. That's life changing. Then we talk about uh, stereotypes around dads, some pretty funny ones. Uh, we talked about how Netflix uh, has just revealed they have 200 million subscribers. That's crazy. I talked about Arizona homeowners who found out that their house had recording devices behind the mirrors. That's scary. Mm, They're Uh, watching us. uh, We talked about the 75 hard thing that's going on on social media again. And then we talked about how popular Magic Spoon cereal is with our listeners. Magic Spoon cereal, no sugar, high in protein, uh, and it tastes like the cereal you ate when you were a kid. It's good stuff. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a discount. Go to magicspoon.com forward slash mind pump and then use the code mind pump and get hooked up. Then we got into the questions. Here's the first one. This person wants to know if they can train their arms on off days to get better gains. The next question, this person wants to know uh, what we think of trainers that always use unstable surfaces to train their clients like BOSU balls and Dynadiscs. The next question, this person's been doing a lot of walking, wants to know if they can walk too much, uh, if that'll take away from their strength and muscle gains. And then the, the final question, this person says, look, women make up at least 50% of gym memberships. What's it going to take for gyms to make their weight rooms more attractive to women? Um, also, this month, we've took, taken some of our best workout programs for people getting started in fitness and bundled them together and discounted them tremendously. So we put this together. It's called the... A starter bundle. It includes MAPS Anabolic, a great program for building strength, muscle, speeding up your metabolism for fat loss. We've also put MAPS Prime in there, a great program to help you correct muscle imbalances and prevent injury. We've put in our intuitive nutrition guide to help you with your diet. And then we've thrown in MAPS Starter for free. MAPS Starter is another workout program. That's the one you want to start with if you haven't worked out in a while or if you're a total beginner. So normally when you get all these programs, uh, retail for about $340, but right now you can get all of them in our starter bundle for $80. That's it. So 80 bucks, you get all those things I just talked about for life. You get life access. And by the way, this comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. Go check them out. Go to mapsjanuary.com. That's the word maps, M-A-P-S, january.com. Happy birthday, Kara. <laughs> <laughs> Are you recording? You <laughs> didn't I, sound I, like that. I, yeah, dude. It, was a, hey, it was a brain we, malfunction. Hey, we, we get every now and then we get these these requests, right? Like somebody will uh, say yeah. happy birthday to my sister. Yeah, something like that, right? So we yeah. try we try and uh, they and, love your show. This would mean everything. And do that every now and then. <laughs> and Justin gets so fucking awkward. I don't like it. I don't know. I don't like it. It's like two words. Happy birthday. What? You're (laughs) such. Hey, you're such an enigma because if I put a wig on you and painted you purple, yeah, then I could do it. And told you to dance on stage in front of a thousand people, yeah. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, hey, I'm gonna. Can I record you saying happy birthday? It's anything sentimental, dude. It's like, ugh. (laughs) 
You know, it's, like, it's like oil that, and water, hey, dude. You know that's from pushing that shit down for so many years, right? Hey, it's, it's, you know that, Get right? it out of my, yes, my <laughs> living room. Hey, you, see, you, can, any, you can watch all the any, Lifetime any of at your, your house. gut shit you got going on, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's from pressing all that stuff <laughs> so deep inside. That combination of that and cheese is just, you know, the just... The armchair philosophy. It's all your here. feelings. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to bubble out. Yeah. Happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I didn't want to do it. psychologist. I hope we have it recording when that happens. Happens one of these days. Jug's recording. No, it. I don't want to see It'll that. Just burst out like, uh, yeah, just an eruption. Yeah, <laughs> start spinning and you emotions. To, I can't have them. You have to focus. Hey, I have I have this hilarious story I've got to read to you or tell you guys about that I read yesterday. I thought was so funny. So uh, Organ Man, who's uh, they're they are looking for him right now, right? So huh? So he who's stole organ man? an organ man, guy up in Oregon, right? Uh, so this guy uh, up in Oregon steals a car. Oregon, yeah. Okay. So Oregon, Oregon, Oregon. Like Oregon. You lost I know, they, if you're from Oregon, do you call it Oregon? Like, because I've heard that all the time. Like, it pisses me off. Oreg- Oregon, 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 Oregon. Or- Oregonian. Oregon. You know what happened? Oregonian. Adam says shit wrong, and then I, <laughs> I don't I'm blame ruined. It. Don't blame it on me. I'm ruined. <laughs> anyway, don't blame, anyway, it. Don't blame right, it on me. So, so guy steals car. Okay. He, after he steals a car, realizes that uh, there was a child in the back seat. Oh, so it gets no. better. So, dude returns back the car, and he and he yells at the woman that he's going to turn her into the police for leaving her kid in the car. <laughs> <laughs> he's turning this around on her. I swear to God! Wow! I swear to God, it's a real story right now. Wow! Yes, the balls. Of Isn't this that guy. great? You, you steal a car, and then you get, see yeah. a child in the that's back. A, that's a toxic. listen. This is irresponsible, lady. That's yeah. A, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm just trying to do my thing, yeah. you know, get a new car, just drive. That's one of those toxic relationship guys, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, it's your fault. I mean, you know, yeah. you walked in. You walked hand. right in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I actually looked at it like uh, he has morals, you know what I'm saying? That's how I looked at it. It's like this thief has morals. Well, though. he probably- Stealing a car is okay. God. Stealing a child, not okay. Exactly. Well, mm. what I'm saying, he probably mentally prepared for- Grand Theft Auto, yeah, was not ready for kidnapping. Right? Right. I mean, that's another level. He's like, I could deal with this, and he's like, "Oh, but what is the difference in those crying. charges? How, how much crazier is one? That, what is that? It's got to be way different." Yeah, I don't oh know. my god! Yeah. I'm no, I'm sure you're right. I'm curious. What, look that up, Doug. What's uh, what's uh, maximum sentence well, for Doug Grand Theft Auto? This remind me of, of <laughs> yeah, top no, of his head. Yeah. <laughs> Did you watch the 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 latest se- season of uh, Westworld? Where they were kind of like they had that app where it was like you could do certain amounts of crime. Yeah, yeah. And but it, it was like on it. Yeah, and so like he was all going through like oh, I'm not comfortable with this. Yeah, but he was comfortable far. with this. You yeah, know, yeah. like there's some people. Yeah, I'll think still like shit, that. but I'm not killing anybody. Hold right? on. Right. Grand Theft Auto is considered a wobbler offense that can be filed by prosecutors as either a felony or a misdemeanor. So if it's oh, a felony. Wow. The maximum penalty one could receive is three years in prison. If charged a misdemeanor, the maxim- maximum penal- maximum penalty is a year in jail. All right, now look up kidnapping. Yeah. <laughs> put, to put in how much jail could I get if I kidnap? Kidnapping is moving another person in a substantial difference without the person's consent by means of force or fear. Simple kidnapping is a felony punishable by eight years in state prison. Oh, yeah, okay, so. so there's some, some more time involved there. Yeah. Oh, the big difference. Like, yeah, yeah. He's like, this is a misdemeanor. Yeah. He's like, I could do a like, year. Listen, <laughs> I'm still in this Bentley right now. I could do a year for a Bentley, but I am not doing eight yeah. years for L- a kid. Looks, looks yeah, in the back. Like, that's just excessive. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> that would suck. Uh, it reminds me of when I was a kid once. Uh, when you were still in cars? Mm-hmm. When I was still in cars back in the day. Oh, you, know yeah? I mean? you know how to hot wire? Oh yeah. Yeah. oh, yeah. All that stuff. No, yeah. I never did that. No, we... <laughs> Get you out the old Slim Jim. No, a friend, friend of mine threw a rock over a fence, and it broke a window, and there was a person in the room, and so it changes the whole thing. Oh, yeah. like, you break a... Re- First of all, he didn't mean to break a window, so that's... He like, threw a rock, and eh, mm-hmm. window, oh, shit, person screaming, right. oh, crap. Oh, wow. Well, I don't have anything that crazy, but I told this story already, but when, when me and my friend were just throwing rocks at this uh, yellow jacket hive... And it was just, you know, it was fun. And we just kept throwing, <laughs> throwing it out from a distance. I don't remember this story. You don't remember this story? Okay, yeah. so there's this one <laughs> like blind- I said, Like I said, it was fun. <laughs> it was fun. I hate those things. Like a- I just I just enjoy killing those uh, yellow jackets. But um, <laughs> so there, there's this corner where, you, you know, it's a blind turn. And we were hiding behind this car, kind of throwing rocks at it because we had to stay a distance. And they were getting pissed. They were, they were covering the sky. That's weird. With uh, Yeah. 
Uh, and so this guy's just wait. You need to back up and and, and paint the picture. So at. I'm confused right now. You said driving and then a corner, blind corner, and then there's a wasp nest. What? No. Oh, so it was yellow jackets. No, no, no. There's a blind turn uh, in the road. So we were basically walking home from school. Okay. And we stopped and we noticed that there was a yellow jackets kind of shooting out of this one spot. Got so it. we're like, oh, sweet. This is an opportunity. Grab some rocks. You know, throw it at it. <laughs> Uh, you know, stir things up, You're have fun. Kid. You know, how, how old are you right here? Thirty five. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I was I was probably like in fourth grade or something. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and uh, so, but I, I still remember this to this day because I I feel terrible about it. But uh, me and my best friend, we were like grabbing bigger rocks and throwing them, and it just was it was madness. And this this poor guy was walking up the street uh -oh. and he had no idea like any of this stuff was happening and was just you know mind his business. And just walked literally right into, and he, he didn't walk like on the other side of the road where he would have just probably, you know, had one or two kind of go after him. He walked right in the eye of the storm, and they literally just engulfed his body. <laughs> oh, wow! And was stinging, and he was like screaming, and then this old lady <laughs> pulls up, and she like she's like, "Get in the car!" He gets in the car, he's swatting them in the car, and me and my friend were just looking at each other with like ghosted faces, like, "Oh my god!" Wait a second, so a stranger is driving. By by sees no, this walking guy by. oh that's yeah yeah, yeah this lady yeah stranger yeah. is driving by sees a guy getting attacked by boss she opens the door get in let's yeah. go we were hiding like behind this car like watching this whole thing we, we weren't like hey stop no we were just like oh my god like whoa what's gonna happen Dang, man. and he yeah. didn't know, and he didn't know that was, you guys did it no was this in santa cruz no, I was near my house, like uh, uh, where I grew up. What town? What town is that? It was up in Felton. I remember reading that. That's no, where the guy died. Right? <laughs> <laughs> He's all anaphylactic shock, <laughs> traumatized for life. That's the thing. There's unintended consequences a, hey, to to mayhem. That's what a, I'm trying to say. You get a DM. <laughs> My dad died. Uh, <laughs> we were wasp we attack. Out no, <laughs> dude, please. Oh, I, I just I, in my heart, I believe he was okay, dude. Uh, so, yeah. You know, nobody these days, nobody would have drove by and said, "Get in the car." I they know. would have pulled their phone out. Yeah, yeah, we got to record this. This guy's. Oh yeah, exactly. Attacked. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, so I was a little asshole kid. That yeah, was that's, definitely not a cool move. That's, that's not good. I mean, Adam doesn't talk about his stories. But I guarantee he's got a ton. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't have uh, that many. Um, I do remember. Except the time you convinced your, your young, younger sibling the world was going to end. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Those, those are true. harmless, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, oh, it's real harmless. Yeah, yeah. He, a, he wrote a will. <laughs> yeah. It scarred him emotionally for a few decades. But other than that, it, it didn't hurt him. You know, it didn't sting him or anything like that. That's terrible. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. That's you terrible. know, that's, that's you, know you know what it is? And Justin and I have this in common. This is the shit kids do when you live out in the country and you got nothing else yeah. to Bored. do. Bored. You cause yeah. a ruckus. Yeah. yeah. We, I, I, one of the things that uh, I remember we got in big trouble for was we lived on top of this so one of the houses that we lived at uh we we had this uh, like three acres and it, it was like this steep hill and we could stand at the top of the the property and we could throw lemons and just make it to the road and it was so high up and kind of far away that if you're driving on the road you can't really see where it's coming from and you know talk about almost impossible to time like you know launching that you know, 50 yards and then also a car. But you got incredible aim. I do. <laughs> <laughs> and like the, low-key uh, flex uh, right now. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. I mean, you got to be perfect. <laughs> actually, I don't think the odds are one of the No, no, no. Yeah, I least. actually don't even think it was me. I think I was just, you know, I guilt by association, right? I was yeah. there. So I think it was actually my cousin who had the uh, the accurate arm that, that tossed it and it hit the top of the the hood of a car. And if you can just imagine oh, no. a, a lemon coming down like from that far up. Oh. Well, boom! Like I mean, it, now as an adult, you're just like, oh, like oh. That, that is like immediate rage. Oh yeah, I mean, and we actually got away with it as far as the person who we, the car that we hit, didn't never put it together, but our parents caught us. You know, we got caught uh, from our parents, and just I think that was a, one of those lashings. Or I mean, there's so many like you just think back and you just think to yourself that you would kick your own ass now. Like totally. if I, if I, like I did one. I this is one of the things that I regret doing for the rest of my life. So if I did this to you, I'm sorry, but. We got smoke bombs. Remember smoke bombs? Yeah. Smoke bombs were awesome. I don't oh, even know if you could great. buy them anymore. But they're like they were like these balls, uh, and they were colored. So it was like one would be blue. You give it Chinatown. One, yeah, and one would be red. And then you'd light it, and then when it, when the when it would get the wick, wick would come down, it would be like blue smoke. Mm -hmm. And it was really cool to watch. And I mean, they're relatively <laughs> safe. I don't think they were big fire hazard or whatever. But you could buy them regularly when I was you know easily when I was a kid. And me and my friend, dude, we were on our bikes riding, and we 
<laughs> we drive, we ride by cars with their, with if the window was open a little bit, we put it in there. And I know some people went in their car the next day, opened the door, and it was blue upholstery. Oh, oh my you know what I, mean? I mean, terrible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I saw a kid doing that now, yeah. it would be, I would be very angry. Yeah, no, that's that's unacceptable. <laughs> At maybe. the very least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a piece of crap. Hey, I have, to, I have to address this because it's been driving me crazy, and I'm, and I'm going to pull up my phone so I don't forget. Uh, I get, ever since we talked about the apps, about the pregnancy, I uh, my DMs, at least probably 50% of them. Oh, right like now are, when the kids. Oh, yeah, I know. I should have never brought it up because now everybody's asking. And it's not me who obviously has the app. It's Katrina who has it. So I've got to remember when I get home to ask her and then to write it down. So I remember. So, anyways, yeah. I got it. Okay. So here it is. Here are the four apps that she uses or we use, right? Leaps is one. <clears throat> I think that's the one we use. The Wonder Weeks and Baby Sparks. And then there's one called the Pregnancy App and the Bump. Those are all four of the ones that uh, mm. she uses and she likes. It tells so, you what to yeah. expect and all that stuff. Yeah, it's cool. No, it's really cool. We're supposed to be waiting. I guess one's coming soon for for my son, which we're uh, Jessica's like okay because he's she's like he's already fussy. Is this going to get worse? <laughs> <laughs> like, I guess it's going to get worse. I don't yeah. know. Well, they're different, right? Sometimes it causes them to be fussy. Sometimes you just notice mm -hmm. different behaviors, right? So like. You know, when he goes through, uh, when Maximus goes through leaps, uh, sometimes it is like that. Sometimes all of a sudden he goes from like happy kid and perfect to all of a sudden he's griping and whining over all the shit, right? Mm -hmm. So that's just part of it. But then sometimes it's just behavior changes. Like right now, the, the thing that we're in is he's really, really attached uh, to Katrina and I, especially me. And so it's weird. It's almost like... I have to one. I do that as a sneak out of the room. So if he sees me and I'm in the room, I can't just leave. Like that's a big deal. Like I can't just walk out of the room or he'll, he'll get pissed mm. uh, if he's not invited. So I have to like sneak out uh, anytime. Or if I'm, if he's having a good time and he's playing with you know family or friends or doing his own thing, and I walk in like he's straight over to me and attached to me. And it's great. Like I love it. I love the. Uh, I love that he's like that with me right now. Yeah, eat it up because when he's a teenager, it's the opposite. Yeah, right. That's what everybody says. So I'm. Yeah. I'm very cognizant of that. So I make an effort to enjoy it as much as I possibly can. But it does. It is a bit of a challenge. So yeah, they're the, all the leaps are different, and the app is always kind of. I mean, at least for us, um, it's been really accurate. I mean, every time that mm -hmm. we've been trying to figure out what's going on with Max right <laughs> now, uh, the latest is I. I've told you we're troubleshooting. Uh, well, before we troubleshoot dairy. Uh, we're messing with the the raw milk first. Mm -hmm. So and yesterday was the first full day of using it, nice. and no no throw up. So it's going to be interesting to see. And Doc said it should within two or three days you should for you sure should know. If yeah. Oh, yeah, if it was because of that, it'll be interesting. And then if he starts to or he still does, then we'll actually eliminate dairy in the diet mm -hmm. and see if that's it. But my theory was we were just drinking plain old grass fed organic uh, vitamin D milk. Which you know when you when you <coughs> pasteurize it, it, ki it it kills some of the enzymes and stuff. That yeah, it, digestive yeah. enzymes. So it's uh, you know the, that's what I that's my theory is that he's not getting that, and mm -hmm. so and but he's his body's rejecting it a little bit. So so far so good. We'll yeah. see. We'll well, see what my happens. my son's got uh, like some gas stuff going on. Right, the kid farts like a man. <laughs> like I'm serious. Makes like, you a little proud. Oh yeah, yeah, it's not a baby fart. It's like yeah. a it's like a, a guttural low it's got some base base yeah. fart, and we just die laughing. When <laughs> It does it. Anyway. Oh, speaking of that, oh, so I'm on actually a little bit of damage control because uh, basically we yesterday was my youngest's birthday and we didn't have any power and so oh we, right because of the wind and stuff yeah we had a crazy windstorm come through and like my whole neighborhood just got like pelted with all of these uh, huge branches lots of trees fell over it was hard for me to get to work it was crazy. But uh, so it took him a long time to get the power back on. And some people in our neighborhood have generators. I'm obviously like slow to that game. So uh, we, uh, we're, we're trying to make fun and make light to uh, enjoy his birthday and whatnot. And so we thought we'd go up to my parents, which live not too far away uh, because they have a generator and everything. And so we were going to go up there and watch a movie. And so you had to watch a movie that was like DVD. And, and so they get to pick out whatever movie like my parents had there. And I didn't know the list. And I'm just sitting there waiting. And then uh, they wanted to see something funny. So they, they picked Blazing Saddles. Oh, no. That's not appropriate. <laughs> oh, boy, that's, that's not very kid appropriate. Uh, like, <laughs> not even close. Like, not at all. <laughs> no. Like, I was like, I was like mortified. Like, I, I couldn't even. And I'm like 
one of the first to be like, oh, this is funny, this is comedy, and blah. Like, is that Mel Brooks? That's Mel. Mel Brooks, Brooks but yeah. it was like it was like one of his first ones, or like you know, well, like it he, is, it is, it is so racy. Like it was, it's like. It's like sex jokes, race sex jokes, jokes, race every- jokes, like, yeah. like like homophobic jokes, like like just like everything you you all the words you don't want your kid to hear. It's were actually like hilarious in there, <laughs> which it's yeah, like it's there's there's some humor in there. There's like we were in it just for the fart scene, you know, and I'm like, okay, where's this? It was just one scene where they eat beans, whatever. But the whole movie was just like <laughs> this like onslaught of like assholes like saying words, and I'm just like, oh my god, like. So I I was like after that I had to kind of like do a little talk with them and like kind of explain like these are some of the worst words. That's uh, got to be an interesting dance for you, right? Because you have Ethan and Everett uh what 3 years apart? Mm-hmm. Is that right? Right? Yeah. 3 years apart? Mm-hmm. So there, I got to think that there's things that you're probably okay with Ethan hearing or seeing or being around, but then not so much Everett, but yet they do everything together. So how do you manage that? How do you like, if it's a movie that you're like, uh, Ethan's probably old enough to hear these things, but uh, I don't know about Everett yeah. doing this. Like, and you, and you can't separate them. So yeah, you just think it's screwed and have to tell, watch all yeah, tri- <laughs> Basically he just gets screwed. Well, you know, you know, that's, that's what happens. You know, that's what happens. Cause I'm getting screwed. Yeah. So. <laughs> He's going to get screwed too. You know, that's what happens when, when they look at, when they do studies on, uh, families where they have multiple children, mm-hmm. the youngest kid gets, exposed to stuff at much younger ages than the oldest uh, might have because of that. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I because mean, either the older sibling shows them or because the older sibling is kind of like the gauge. So yeah. it's like, eh, that's probably why it. I have a much more messed up sense of humor than my brother. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you just got exposed to all that stuff way too early. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, tell me about the storm. Was it like how bad? Because I know down here, you know, I, in, it woke us up or, or in bed and it was like super, super loud. And I'm down in the yeah. city. Oh, it was loud. Yeah, there was, we were getting pelted with uh, branches like all night. It was almost on like every 20 minutes. Like, I didn't get any sleep that night because it was like, if I didn't hear it, Courtney heard it and then would just like, like get startled and freak out. And so I'd keep waking up. But uh, yeah, one of my neighbor's car had one of these huge branches just like spear through both of his cars. So he broke both windshields of his car. My other neighbor had one go right through like the awning of his uh, uh, roof. And then uh, there was one up the street that uh, a, a whole tree came down and basically hit the end of this this car and pushed it off towards this cliff. And then another one like clipped the front of it. Uh, and it, I was like, wow, th- I've never seen this. Uh, e- even I don't know why like all these trees were falling because is it that they're dry? Is it we haven't had enough rain or is it like... Like, uh, I don't know what the case Wasn't there, is. There was a more a fire too, right? Yeah, there's a fire. Oh, yeah. So now, okay. So now we're dealing with that too. That's another thing that's uh, somewhat close again to where I live uh, that some people are getting evacuated again. And I'm like, what's happening, dude? This is supposed to be a different year. <laughs> you know, like what we're doing this all over are again. Are we doing this again? And, and you want to, you don't want to, you don't ever consider not living up in the mountains. No, dude. Like. Honestly, this is such a freak thing. Like, uh, we've never had any so issues. So freak, it's happened twice in two months. <laughs> I know. It was, like, it was like six months ago. Yeah, I want to live in, in boring suburbia, dude. No thanks. Yeah, live with all the track houses where everybody goes to die. Yeah, no thanks. I'll live in the woods. Hey, I have something for Doug. I wanted to ask you, Doug. We brought up the other day um, uh, Barstool Sports, right? And we and we talked about their their thing that they are doing. And they're up to like, what, $25 million or something like that. I their wanna, fund? Yeah, their fund, right? They're, so it's... I know it's been growing and we got uh, a, an email and sent to us from our, our partner with Felix Gray and they have partnered up with Barstool Sports and this fund. What's going on? Yeah, that's correct. So Dave, I'm not that familiar with Barstool, but I think he he's the host, correct? Yeah, yeah I think uh, he's the he's the founder. There's a different, Erica uh, Erica is the f- uh, CEO, CEO now, but I, he was the original founder, I believe. Okay. So Dave uses Felix Gray glasses. He's a big fan. And so what they're doing now, F- Felix Gray is donating 10% of every Roebling frame sale uh, through January to Barstool Sports. This, is, fun. this is so fucking awesome yeah, to great. me. I mean, I think it's so cool to see a, a private company like this 
that that's got that kind of pool mm-hmm. that is starting to gather all this money to be able to go out and give to these businesses that are struggling. So cool to see uh, other and all of the famous people that are getting on board. Now we're seeing big yeah. companies like Felix Gray trying to back it. It's going to be really interesting to watch over the next three to four months to see how much traction they actually get. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I really, really like that they're doing that. It's yeah. nice to watch. Yeah, sure. pull up the fund again. Let's see where it's at now, Doug. It's at $22 million. You were, did you just see it? Uh, that's what it has written up there. Oh, yeah. No. but that's. I'm not that's, sure that's updated. Though. No, it's not oh. updated because I think the last time I saw, I already seen it at $24 million, Really? So, yeah, oh, no. Wow, it's, it's going that fast. Yeah, yeah. So really yeah, cool. $27 million. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah dude. Good for them. Yeah, that's Good rad. Hey, speaking of money, did you guys see what the Mega Millions is at? No. What Doug, is it? Doug, pull it up because it heard, changes all the time. Yeah, it's, Look, in, it's like the hundreds. Uh, hundreds, yeah, but almost close to- Like 500? Oh, it's- just, Almost a billion? No. Yeah. Has it ever been no that way? high? I, well, Doug, pull it up right now. Doug. Wasn't the highest like five hundred or seven hundred million before? Uh, Wasn't that the yeah, I saw it at five hundred before. Nine hundred seventy million. Oh my god! <laughs> so it's gonna. I mean, it could theoretically well, it's all monopoly money the, anyway. Yeah, no, th- theoretically, it could reach a billion dollars for the Mega Millions. Now, wow. what are the theories on why why it gets driven up this high? Sometimes there's no other? theories. It's just if nobody wins, it goes up. So it, nobody's won for a while, so it keeps going up and oh, up and wow. up. So nine hundred. Now, what's the cash out, Doug? Is there a way you could see what the cash out is? Yeah, it's. What do you mean? If you want to take it all at once? Yeah, it's 50, not. Nice it's fifty percent. Is it a hundred percent? Yeah, yeah. Have you right guys now. ever met somebody right, yeah, who yeah. won the lottery, like uh, a mega million? Lottery? I knew someone who knew someone who won the lottery. Oh, yeah. They I had a up, client that. Uh, yeah, they oh, actually they, did. Yeah, yeah. This lady. Really? Yeah, and and they were so. Uh, like they didn't want to disclose any of that. To was me, it honestly. when you worked for me or when you by yourself? No, I was by myself. Oh, okay, it was one of my, yeah, it was one of my like clients that I just picked up randomly. That and you couldn't uh, even resign them, huh? Yeah, no, I didn't resign. <laughs> just shut up. Well, that's too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine how uh, oh. weak I would be if that? Oh my god, that's, just I'd be awesome. embarrassed. Oh, dude. Yeah, no, no <laughs> things I, are tight right now. Actually, Are you I, a three for ninety nine special? I'll do that again. <laughs> yeah, I did a takeaway close. Actually, I walked away from that deal, and then they called me back and, and brought me back in, and then gave me what I asked for. But oh, okay. uh, yeah, they uh, but they didn't want me to know that they're worth. Uh, whatever it was like, I think it was a hundred million that they had won. Wow! But, but then, but they had only they, they basically like they put it in, in in a way where they could like they couldn't touch it until um, uh, like because the daughter she set it up so the daughter couldn't have any access to it and everything until she was a certain age and then they there was all these parameters that they could set with it. Smart. But yeah, it was pretty smart and then they basically just like put it in the bank and then like lived off the interest and all that. Because so. the statistics on that is very similar to the Biggest Loser statistics. Right? Oh yeah, people yeah. go back. So the, yeah, the amount of smart one I've heard. Yeah, right. I think I think I've read before that it's seventy five to eighty percent of the people that win that end up losing or going bankrupt afterwards. Mm-hmm. Like, very similar or to causing other problems. Oh yeah, yeah. Because think about it this way: imagine if uh, you're imagine if all the people you knew, because it's broadcast, right? So especially this one, Mega Millions. Mm-hmm. Whoever wins this, so the way I would do it is I'd see if there's a legal way to have a lawyer go and get my money because I wouldn't want anybody to know. Yeah, because like the, the your family is gonna hit you up. Like there's anybody's friend, ever known. There's you. no anybody. way you don't. There's so yeah. much. TV and pub around it. You for for about yeah. a week, you're as you famous as the most famous actor or right. actress. So imagine It'll be what parked that would out bring. in front of your house. Exactly. Yeah. Imagine what that would bring. Right. You'd have all kinds of people coming up to you. Hey, oh yeah, you know, remember you? How about help me out here? Help me out there. So either you'd have to be the biggest asshole and and just be like, no. Or oh, I would I would lie and say I tied it up just like Justin's. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, you know what? I didn't even take any of it for myself. Well, she I put kept, it away in a trust yeah. for my for my kids. They, yeah. And then I roll up in a Bentley like the next day. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, there you go. Yeah, you know, they bought all these other properties, but they kept like their first property. It was like East San Jose and everything. And so I, I, oh, know, wow. whatever. I, like it was it was totally modest house. Like I, I totally unassuming, and I'm like asking for a lot of money, you know, with with my services. So I was like, I felt kind of like an asshole. But then after that, I was like, oh, pff, I should ask for more. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, so half, so theoretically, let's just round it up, $500 million, then minus all the taxes that you would pay. Yeah, which is- you, You'd end up with about 200 clean, right? 200, 200. No, so, clean. okay, so I've looked at the- uh, I knew you'd do so, this. Yeah, I have, I have looked at this before, <laughs> <laughs> just in case. <laughs> yeah. Even though I never, I actually never buy a lot of tickets. Yeah. So I've never, but I was very curious on like the difference of if you, because you have a, a, I think it's a 30 year choice payout. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can either pay it out 30 years or you can take all of it up front. That's, if you, a, that's if, you, if you think that the state <coughs> is going to be solvent for 30 years. Right, <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah. I'd right. not take that. Back. Right. So I, uh, I, and obviously taking it all, 
you at, up front you definitely pay way more taxes yeah. and it's if like i were, if crazy. i remember correctly the all the fees and the everything it was uh, it's a it's it, with including taxes is 50 percent. so you mm-hmm. basically will end up with half of that money right and you're oh and that's it, everything yeah yeah, yeah that's, that's everything if you take it all at once yeah if you yeah. take it all at once wow. taxes every still that's like it's a half a billion yeah dollars. yeah right it's, it's a lot but I'd then you but that. i think you get closer to like 75 percent of it if you actually were to let it you know over the 30 years doug let's say you took five that half a billion 500 million and put it into just a, a savings account what's the what do you get on a savings account right now one, i know it's one, almost nothing one, one almost point. nothing yeah, yeah but what is that still with 500 million dollars that comes out to a lot of money yeah it, well yes i think so i mean like if you get treasury bills or whatever they're called t-bills or- well you could lock you could lock it so you could, the highest you can get in like a, an account like that is like four percent on a uh a cd mm. yeah. so cd right the best cd out there right now will get you like 4.2 percent. so you do and you can lock it for six months to a year at a time like that uh so figure uh 4.2 percent on would you say uh, half a billion dollars half a billion that's dollars. a lot of money still yeah no it'd still be a lot that's of money. wild so how much would you give us if you won I just want it on record. Each of you guys? <laughs> yeah. If I won this one? Yeah. Let's say you won half a billion dollars. I'd you throw each work you, tomorrow. I'd throw each of you guys 10 mil. Wow, wow. that much, oh, huh? Yeah. Nice guy. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's a lot. I would have been happy really? with it. i just put it in the business and be like, you guys, you know, we'll figure this out. Uh, well, I don't know. Like, uh, we live in the Bay Area. Throwing you guys a mil is almost disrespectful, I feel like. Uh, really? Yeah. Like, if a it million would be like, hey, <laughs> you could go buy yourself a, a condo and then this will cover you for the first uh, couple years of property would, taxes. Would, that's real talk right there. <laughs> I was just going to get you guys a gift card to Target. So. <laughs> Stupid. Ten, I feel like a 10 million gift is to you says, like, you guys can go buy yourself a modest house here and I got your property taxes covered for the rest of your life. So basically, I get you a house. That's it. That's that, what you get with 10 true. million here. You know what I'm saying? Right. I gave you a million, you'd be like, fuck, fuck, bro. This is, what am I going to do with it's this? Hilarious, <laughs> oh, dude, I, 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 there was a site I wanted to bring up. There's this uh, like funny dad stereotypes. I want to see how many of these are true for you guys. Oh, okay. Are oh, we being sweet. honest here? Yeah. So some okay. of these are stupid, but some of them are hilarious. Like, yeah. here's one. Uh, why do dads always shake their handful of peanuts or M&Ms oh, before this? popping them in their mouth? <laughs> Yeah, it's a thing. You what just learn that? that. I think it's been passed on for I do the same thing. Yeah. There's, I can't just, like, you have to do this. Well, same I, thing okay. with, like, sunflower okay, so seeds. Okay, so my theory is that, okay, so when you have a whole handful of them, they're kind of sliding all over. But when you, you shake them around, you're getting them right here on the underneath the index finger. So you could, it's the po- uh, it's the uh, proper toss. Yeah. So the shaking you're is- placing the, them in the right yeah, spot. Yeah, it's getting the proper toss. Yeah. All right, all right. That's, that's my good, theory on why I do it. That's a good one. That's logical. Here's another one. Why do dads always have really thick wallets? That's kind of uh, true. Yeah. That's the Seinfeld uh, episode. You remember that one? Yeah. No, I don't. Oh, you don't remember the Seinfeld episode? Oh, yeah. Where, yeah, where he pours a huge like, <laughs> wallet. He pulls his yeah. wallet out. And it's like it looks like a, like a triple oh, quarter pounder. Like it's like this big, and he's got like every receipt. Because it's all the receipts. Yeah, yeah, exactly, dude. They they put too much stuff in there. Yeah. Here's a why do dads always grunt when they sit down? We've talked about that. Uh, yeah, that yeah. just started happening to me. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. understand that. Yeah, when you're tying your shoes. Yeah. yeah. Why, why do dads think they can outsmart the GPS? That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Two. Uh, why do dads, I know better than that, actually. Yeah. Why do dads always sleep on the couch as soon as they sit down? <laughs> because we're tired of listening to your shit. Only okay? you can do that. <laughs> Sal is the only one in this group that I have seen that can just, like, on yeah. command sleep, bro. Bro. Yeah. It is. Can okay, we talk about your it, uh, it is a superpower. Your photographic memory? The the other skill that you have that I'm I'm very envious of is the ability to, like, just fall asleep. Yeah. You would fall asleep in a in a in your own goddamn meeting to your business. If I, yeah. yeah. Depends on if we weren't about. constantly checking you every 15 minutes. <laughs> I have to stand up and yeah. move. Yeah, if we ever, yeah. anyone who's running a meeting in Sal's in it, like every 15 minutes, it's like you say Sal's name. So Sal, what do you think of that? Right <laughs> I know, sure I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, that's I agree, I agree, agree. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it, some of these are f- sneezing really loud. That's definitely uh, a bad yeah, thing. Yeah. Katrina I've claims always done that. Katrina claims now. See, okay, again, now who's 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 uh, who's coming up with these ideas? Women that have said this about men. Well, sure. I think kids Cause, and women. Because I think that Katrina believes that when I became a dad, all of a sudden everything I do is obnoxiously loud. You know what it is, dude? It's that she's more conscious. That's of what I yes. said. I said. It's not me. I'm the same dude making the same sounds I have for the last decade we've been together. Yeah. You are just so anal when it comes to sounds with our our son. Like, literally, he has, this is no joke, and I, I think we're going to have to see a therapist about this at one point. <laughs> so we, Katrina has a minimum of two, sometimes three 
sound machines in his room when he's sleeping. Wow. <laughs> and and then on top- kid's not going to be able to fall hey, asleep anymore. And then on top of that, yeah. I'm down to, to the second level of the house, right? So a, very, super far away from his room, okay? And I like turn the channel up to where I can like kind of hear what's on the TV. And she's like, turn the TV down. It's way too loud. You're going to wake okay. the baby up. I don't I'm, feel so bad then. I'm like, Katrina, you're crazy. <laughs> I'm like, you could literally go jump up and down on the wood floor right in front of his bedroom and he would sleep with those. That's what those those white noises do is it, yeah. it, it cancels that that distant noise like that. It, she's But she's so- I don't feel so bad because I'll be downstairs. Jessica's trying to put the baby asleep and I'll, I'll, I'll close a cupboard or I'll put something down. And I'll get a text in all caps. Be quiet. I know. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, I'll have, we, we, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I stomp like, around like an elephant, you know, especially in the morning. I can't help it. Dude. I, I, I stumble. I can't see what I'm doing. Like, it takes my body a while, a while to like see clearly and to wake up properly. You need your 15 cat yeah, coffee. I, I well, that's why I, I try to tell her. I'm like, I'm 6'3", 230 pounds. I'm not petite. Like, it's not easy to like move lightly everywhere <laughs> like you do. It doesn't yeah. work the same way. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah. My kids well, tell, like say ninja. that about me. Why do you do everything so dramatic that's my daughter <laughs> everything you do is so dramatic she thinks you're such oh a my god drama I, for, I forgot she's drama she, yeah. i forgot that's gonna you're be your so new drama nickname. dad she goes why every, you drink water and it's so dramatic and you you close a cupboard and it's so dramatic everything you do is dramatic and well, jessica's like oh, i told you look you courtney caught me out one the other day where i was like every time i take a dr- and i just like i'll take a drink or something and i'll be like ah. Yes, that's and I'm like, oh fuck, I do that every time. Yes. I didn't realize that. You know, Bro, I was like, oh, it's mind blown. I did fights with oh, Jessica sick. over that. It's like, why do you have to do that? I'm like, I don't <sighs> like I don't know what you're talking you know, about. Like, I feel like that was programmed in us from some okay. stupid commercial. Hold on a second. Try drinking without doing it. You can't. Yeah. It's not the same. It's not as good. It like, not at all. It's not satisfying. It's not good, yeah. I, if I drink, it's just because like, I can hear you swallowing. I'm like, I don't know how to drink water anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know even know how to do it. What the hell is going on? Uh, yeah, I would go, mm-hmm. yeah, I still I can't do stuff. that. Hey, you guys see uh, Netflix is now up to 200 million subscribers. Holy God. Yeah, so the the wait, the, what's their average monthly? Phew, what are they charging? Nine ninety nine is, is what it. They, is it ten bucks? I don't know. It's nine. Yeah, but I think the it pandemic went. Up, was I believe good it them. went up to twelve. Maybe Doug can fact check me there. They they were nine. I think they started at six and they went to nine, and then I think they're at twelve. So is that twenty? Is that two billion? Twenty billion dollars? What I mean? What, Whoa, is two that right? billion dollars? Do, yeah, yeah f- fuzzy two, math. Over. I don't know what Use I did your there. calculator, buddy. Uh, sorry. What is that? Yeah, it's two billion bucks. <laughs> if it's ten bucks on average, right? It's two hundred million. Yeah, it's gonna be two two. So billion. it was eight nine. Oh, now it's thirteen ninety nine. Okay. And seventeen ninety nine. So you could probably do an average of ten, like you said. I think that's a good. No call. wonder they're producing so many damn <laughs> Netflix now, movies. Now, uh, okay. So I yeah. want to hear your guys. Now, of course, this is just my circle, so this is not like I, I can't back this up other than this. Uh, I have a lot of friends, and we we are, we we all have Netflix, that uh, have felt lately that it's kind of like eh, mm-hmm. they uh, it's just so much content, right? Mm-hmm. They they're they're the content kings right now when it comes to streaming media, but I mean I can't name one uh, Netflix produced movie that I haven't liked any of them. that I thought was like no. amazing that will go down as like oh that's a that's going to be a classic mm-hmm. movie so. What is your theories on like that? And they're dumping a lot of money into that right now of producing their own movies and content. And there's not a lot of stuff. I know Stranger Things was a big original that yeah, they did. That was that, a hit. That that probably made a lot of money and stuff like that. But that but, was a series. You're talking about a movie? Yeah, either or, right? It's mm-hmm. anything that the, any content that they that's original to them, right? So it's, that's I think that's where we're the, probably the most profit is, right? Because they had that other one where the, you had to have your eyes closed the whole time. What was that one oh, again? Oh, Bird Box. Bird Box. Yeah, that I was mean, okay. But that one, I think that one made them some money. But yeah, they really haven't had any original, uh, uh, you know, produced series or, or movies that have really taken off in a long time. Yeah, They've all been to... kind of like, meh. You know what I get a feel from it is that it's an example of when they use like the algorithm to hack, right? So yeah. it's like they, they all are kind of like- They're too eh. reliant on it. Yeah, right? Like it's it's like, oh, that's okay. That's not mm-hmm. bad. It's like because they hit all the buttons, right? They hit all the things that this is you're supposed to like this, therefore you it's don't- all, It's all lukewarm. Well, you they're know what, not yes. going for the, the yes. hot, hot. They're going for lukewarm. Yeah, but you know what they do well is they'll buy a series. that Like Cobra Kai was not well, Netflix. They yeah, bought that. Yeah, I know. That was YouTube. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know. Okay, what I don't understand is is how profitable it- I would assume, Okay, my guess, just like it is in like our business or most businesses, 
is where the most profit would probably be is your own produced content. To buy a series like Cobra Kai from YouTube, I would I would imagine cost them tens of millions of dollars mm-hmm. to do that just to put it on their 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 streaming service. So right. I don't think that that is as as profitable for them as creating well, their own content. That's Ti- my- Tiger King. I mean that that was amazing. Was that theirs? Yeah, Netflix. They have okay. one on now that's called Night Stalker. And that was a cultural phenomenon for sure. Yeah, yeah it, Tiger King d- was awesome. Has anybody watched the Night Stalker one that's up right now? No. Mm-hmm. Apparently, it's about the that serial killer, the Night Stalker. Okay. I haven't, I haven't watched it yet because uh, I tried to watch it, but Jessica's like, yeah, No, you guys have officially fucked up my Netflix completely. How? Both you two. <laughs> yeah. And Why are you looking at me? Down. I never touch your Netflix. Well, yeah, because it's on the Truckee house. So whoever's watching it over there. Oh. The one I the upstairs. Now, is I got me. All the, now I got all this aliens, conspiracy oh, well, bullshit. That's, that's, like, that's Justin. Could Trina and I are like last totally night, we're like, cl- we're clicking through them, and she's like, why is it our Netflix looks nothing like stuff we watch anymore? Uh, well, yes. it's because it's logged into the Truckee house, and I said, freaking everybody's up there using it, and so we get all these weird freaking shows that are here. I saw one the other day. It, it was like a documentary, and it had like this lizard-looking person with a crown <laughs> on their head. I know you know what I'm talking about, Justin. I don't know. Of course. Dude. Yeah, you do know what I'm talking yeah, of about. I, 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 the, just the cover alone, I was like. <laughs> Justin's like, seen this already. Come on, dude, you guys. That's, that's the real entertainment. You guys are missing out. Man. It's so out there. I love it. Uh, yeah, like, I don't know if I want to watch this or not. Yeah. There was a, they had one on, I don't know if it was on Netflix, but it was on the crack epidemic uh, of the 80s. Wow, that is crazy. If you guys oh. learn about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That was uh, so devastating. I watched that. And then I did watch some of the t- the Tiger Woods one. Oh, you did? A little bit. Yeah. Oh, okay. What do you think so far? I think it's, uh, boy, it's so far, I'm like halfway through the first, only the first episode. Okay. But man, his, uh, f- talented as hell, obviously naturally talented, something that he was born to do. Yeah. But his dad, you can see already just the dysfunction and how he's making, you yeah. know, his, and he's, he's feeding his kid that he's like the Messiah. You know, yeah. that's going to that's gonna mess up a kid. You don't tell a kid that. Oh, I know. I imagine the pressure of trying to live up to that, right? And then you wonder why he went on this, like, crazy Vegas. Like, you'll see later on, right? He gets on, he goes on this binge of, like, in Vegas every other week. And then they get into, like, these. And these, there's, like, there's companies and of or businesses that, like, prey on guys like him that are, mm. s- like, super wealthy and rich. They come in and they literally... And in the documentary, they talk about this. This girl's getting interviewed, and she's like a, you know, a, I don't know what her technical name of, of her business, but she's like a madam or mm-hmm. a boss lady of all all the chicks and everything, right? And and drugs, anything you fucking lady want. pimp, and yeah, whatever you want to call it. And they they get off the plane, and they're like, whatever you desire, we'll make sure it happens. I mean, and then you treat them like that. And when you got these guys that can spend, you know. Million. I mean, every, you know, people listening are like, oh, that's, uh, but I mean, if you're really presented with that truly and you're on top of the world, that's a difficult thing to say no to. Well, especially if your, your ego's well, bloated and yeah. your whole life you've been told that you're the king or whatever. Right. Yeah. And then, and you haven't experienced a lot of these crate, like you didn't have time to go do drugs and party and have, you know, uh, orgies and crazy wow. shit. You, you didn't have. You were too busy. I missed that too, Adam. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. Oh, you missed that time for I never did that. What the hell? Yeah. Well, you were married at nineteen. Yeah. That's oh what happens, God. guy. Oh, sorry. So, that's supposed to be somewhere like twenty five. Yeah, he, he did seem like he was all studious and, and a bit of a nerd. You know. Going oh, totally. Through, yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. No, he totally was. And so, yeah, this is it's pretty uh, common, I think. And you know, th- this is extreme with like golfing, but you see this even with like really strict parents. So you know, like if you have parents who don't let you do anything whatsoever and then the kids it's go just, to college it's a, it's and they a, go crazy. It's a bad combination of that plus uh, a, a bloated <laughs> ego, you know, thinking that you are different than everybody or better yeah. in all ways and then you just you behave in bad ways. People who believe that behave in ways that are not... Sure, sure. Yeah, that are bad. Invincible, right? Speaking of crazy stuff, I pulled up this article. Uh, this, uh, the, this happened in Arizona. So these homeowners bought this new house in Arizona and as they were, they bought it and they're in there moving their stuff and the owner's, the new owner's father noticed that one of the mirrors in the bathroom was kind of weird. Mm-hmm. So they, he went to do something with it and then found that it was a two-way mirror. No. There were Ew. wires. Oh, that's... What? There were wires from the mirror to like another part of the room. No. And so, so they started to... And this girl, this woman, uh, shared video has shared videos of her house that she just bought on TikTok and is showing people elsewhere. So, so apparently the previous owners had wired up this house with all these what? did they like Airbnb it or they, was they, it they would them? they would have parties and stuff in this house uh-huh. and apparently they would spy on people in the bathroom oh and do a bunch of weird shit oh 
creeps. So they found all the stuff in the house that they bought. What? I know. Isn't that, creepy? that is creepy as fuck. That's Hella creepy. So creepy. Can you uh, imagine that? What the hell's wrong with people? They, oh, remember that house? We Didn't we rent a house once that was weird like that? <laughs> we, we rented a house in <laughs> Hollywood Hills. paraphernalia Hill. like everywhere. <laughs> yeah, no, we rented a house in Hollywood Hills and... and I forget what there, there's hundred percent was used for a porn. Shoot. Yeah, well, no, there's a there's a term for it up there, and that's actually one of the things that they have to. I know that. What's the valley? There's that valley there, San, San, Fernando, San, San Fernando, Valley. Fernando Valley. That's where it was, right? Yeah. yeah. It well, was. isn't that close to that area, yeah. right? Not far from that area yeah. where we were staying that one time, and I forgot what I heard, but I, I know that the all the houses that get rented there, that it's like the, there's all these rules around that because it's so common. People rent them and then shoot a porn and then yes, and then they bounce out like that. Remember that there were like wires coming out of the wall. There was a room that we couldn't go in for whatever reason. Yeah, there was, was like a, a mound of ground up marijuana on the countertop still. <laughs> it's like do you guys didn't even have the house cleaners here before us. Like oh my god, I thought the, oh, we have a few horror stories. I'm of like houses man, that Airbnb's we rented. stepping up, dude. They're leaving, oh, yeah. they're leaving gifts for the <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, how, that's how we looked at. It. Hey, roll that shit up, dude. Don't <laughs> <laughs> Don't waste that. <laughs> Dude, you guys see that? There was a documentary of this guy who owned uh, one of those like motels that um, he he basically like set it up so the there was like an upstairs part or, or basically he could like climb up in the rafters and had like cameras in each one of the rooms Disgusting. so he could so he could see and, and was doing this for years. Disgusting. And nobody had any idea. And he like came clean on this video and was like talking about his obsession with like watching people and like, Dude, I was the, like the, oh my God. Do you imagine how, there's people out there like that. Oh the beating I'd give someone if I found out they were spying on me. Yeah, like yeah. you're gonna kick your ass so oh hard. Yeah. God. That's not even funny. Hey, it's just private. Speaking of hard, I think we have to address so I want to hear what you guys have to say because um of course it was inevitable when we talked about the somebody asked a question about the seventy five hard uh and we all went on probably a similar rant about how we feel about it and kind of uh poo-pooed all over it and of course uh he has a massive following of people that uh, love love what he's doing and support everything he's doing and so we got a little bit of backlash on the youtube channel and comments regarding that that we were inaccurate about how we described 75 hard and that you know, it's not designed to be a way of life and that it's really designed to challenge you mentally for the those 75 days and to, you know, the things that you would normally say yes to and do, the idea is that you are disciplined for 75 days and turn down all these things. It's mm -hmm. not designed to be a way of life. So, so it's a spiritual practice. So I guess, yeah. is that what it is? That how I you, mean, that's what it sounds like. It's like fasting. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're, you're, you're apparently, you know, for 75 days, you're dedicating yourself to this to see what kind of growth you can get out of it. So I, I wonder how many people actually use it that way. Well, yeah, not only that is, you know, does that change your opinions on it? And if so, why? And if so, if not, why not? It doesn't change my opinions because I, I, I can guarantee you the vast majority of people that are doing it are doing it for weight loss reasons or yeah. doing it for body composition change reasons. Just like fasting. Fasting, uh, such a small percentage of people that do fasting are actually doing it for actually true health uh, you know, healthy reasons. Yeah. Uh, fasting is just people are using it as a way to starve themselves or lose weight or it's a new diet. Same thing. So, so I think even if it is just a mental thing, right, that it, the, the people are claiming, I still have a problem with it because the the desired outcome of uh, getting you started or or getting into health and fitness is to create behavioral changes in your life. And if you're trying to make the claim to me that this is just supposed to be a, a mental challenge for 75 days, then what is the what is the desired outcome of after the 75 days? Are you supposed to maintain some of those things? Are you supposed to cut your training from two times a day every single day down to just one time a day? Or what is the desired outcome? That? Or just to prove that you have the mental fortitude to say no to all these things and train two days a week, indoor, outdoor, all the crazy things around it? Like, what is the real desired outcome of that? If we are starting that to kickstart your health and fitness journey, um, it it go it's the opposite of my philosophy with with training a client. I want to start them with as little as possible because I want it to stick forever. I don't want to say, okay, these are all the bad things in your life. We're going to go as hard as we can for the next 75 days to try and resist from it to prove that you have the mental fortitude. Yeah. And then after that, we can trickle it in how you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. I think for the most part, like it, it, you know, if it's in introducing somebody into health and fitness, I have issues. I, I look at that as more of like a, a challenge for somebody who has good habits already established. And this is something that they can kind of stretch their capacity to, uh, you know, uh, see, see what they can do like mentally now that they've figured out like how to manage all these things properly, uh, you know, in their life physically. So mm -hmm. I just don't, uh, the, the all or nothing, it, it's very like a similar approach to that. Like I just, 
I find a lot of flaws with that approach and I've seen that actually in training people all the time. It's like you go too hard. It's, you know, you're going to have some successes, but you're also going to have a lot of failures with that approach. Well, yeah, I'd be really curious to see the statistics on how many people that actually, one, complete it to be, first of all, I would I would imagine there's a, an incredible fallout rate mm -hmm. uh, because of how crazy it is. I mean, and what does that do to spin somebody out, you know, just to create more bad behavior? Right. And then, and then let's, let's look at first, okay, what percentage of people don't even make the 75 they fall off before that and then what percentage of people complete the 75 and then what do their behaviors look like for the next six months to a year mm -hmm. and what i would challenge and question is did it really take some anybody and uh, you know or what percentage of people actually took that ran it for 75 days and then we don't need implemented great behaviors for the rest we of already the have statistics on just diet I mean, forget all the other changes. Somebody does a no carb diet or somebody does a diet where they cut out all sugar. We know what the statistics are on that. And the fail rate is 80 to 90 percent. And they're, and I'm talking about they're, they're following people for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I bet if you follow people long enough, the fail rate probably goes up to closer to 100. So we already know that. And so those are there's more and there's more changes than just diet in that 75 hard. So I would bet money that the fail rate was just as bad uh, as we see with with, yeah. with, with uh, other stuff. Yeah, I, agree. I mean, I mean to ask you, Adam, because I know you are always in close contact with our partners and sponsors. <laughs> um, and from what I've noticed on Instagram, it seems like one of the fan favorites uh, by a long shot is Magic Spoon. That's got to be the one. I see the most posts, the most people commenting. Am I... Am I accurate? Is that yeah? What no, reporting? it's it, it's uh, it was actually I remember when we first signed last year with them, and I was a little concerned. So one of the things I asked, like when we uh, bought this is a little business stuff behind the scenes, so people know who whoever gives a shit about this. Um, <clears throat> I always ask like what their average purchase price is, lifetime value of a customer. Uh, it always gives me a good idea of how well we should be able to convert based off of the traffic that we see and. So I, I can always tell like right away, okay, well, this is a product or this is something that we love. It's great, but the price point where they're at, I don't know if we can if we can sell as much to justify the spend for a commercial for them. And I'm very on, honest with that. And I was really concerned with management. So cheap. You know, it's you, a box of cereal. Yeah, thirty nine dollars. You yeah. know, thirty nine dollars is their average purchase because you get those four boxes that come in for that, right? So that's kind of their their average purchase price, which is low for us. We do much better with items that are 150 and above because we don't have a massive Joe Rogan sized podcast. But most people, if we say, hey, this is something that we like or use, a lot of people will check it out. Well, uh, was really worried about Magic Spoon for those reasons. Um, it's actually, uh, of all the things that we're partnered with, um, more people use uh, Magic Spoon than anything else. And I just, what I think they did really, really I mean, well. That's what we thought would happen too, though. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's what we, we hoped. Right? We hope, yeah. yeah I, I, would hope, I hope that people would, would I mean, we, every once in a while, I saw something on the forum the other day, which I was, tried the fruity, and they're like, oh, I don't like that. I was like, what? You're, I know, that's the best are you one. you high, bro, yeah. or what? Like, how do you not, who does not like the fruity cereal? It's like so good. Anyways. Uh, it's yeah, no, they, they, out of all the partners that we work with, uh, they have performed the best. And again, I think it's just because I, as f I've tried a lot of these, like, uh, you know, quote unquote, healthy cereals or cereal that is supposed to have more protein mm -hmm. and you get one of two things. One, the ones that claim high protein, high proteins, like 10 grams of protein in a serving. It's not really that high of mm -hmm. protein, uh, or, or it tastes like fucking cardboard and it's terrible. And they just have hit it out the park with how amazing it tastes. And the macros are incredible. Even mm. when I've shared on the show where I've overindulged and I've had like this big old bowl of it, when you break down the macros, when you look at, mm -hmm. you know, sugar and protein and, and calories, and it's just, it's beautiful. So e whether you have a nice little serving size, that gives you a little 20 gram shot of protein, or you go kind of bananas and you have a 80 gram serving of protein, the calories are really, really, really balanced for what you're getting nutrient wise from it. And I think that's why it's just done so well. Okay. First question is from Mason Burnt. Can I, or should I train my arms on off days for optimal muscle growth or are compound lifts sufficient in developing arms? You know, frequency, although now I'm starting to see people really start to play with frequency of training, um, It's it, it for a long time was a variable that was not utilized uh, effectively. I mean, you can train muscle groups quite often throughout the week so long 
as you modify the intensity. Yeah, you just got to manage your intensity. Yeah, you can't train your arms all the time super hard, but you can train them often if a lot of those workouts are also easy. So if you're doing two hard workouts a week where your arms are getting a lot of work, can you add more volume, more frequency, and get your arms to respond even more? You can. Just keep the intensity kind of low. The best results I ever got uh, with myself and with clients was – exactly that playing with frequency and so theoretically you could work out your arms five days a week uh, two of them relatively hard the rest of them kind of easy giving yourself a pump and feeling the muscles work and that's about it but you'll get great results doing that now what are your guys' thoughts on the the individual variants here of like because however how and i i can't help but think of justin right in this situation because i think if you watch the two of us do a, a bunch of the same lifts it just looks different and uh and how he recruits uh, muscle to do a pull up or a row is different than how I recruit muscle to do a pull up or a row. And some people, when they do compound lifts, their their arm, their biceps um, and triceps develop incredible with just doing that alone. Uh, I'm not like that. Like if I if I just do compound lifts, my arms don't really develop nearly as much as if I put some sort of attention and focus on it. I think Justin's the opposite of that. I think that he can do a lot of the the functional training he does and just stick to a lot of the compound lifts he does, and his arms put on size really well. Mm-hmm. How much do you think of this is uh, mm-hmm. you know genetic, and then the individual variants of how people recruit muscle when they do these lifts? That's hard to say. There's yeah. always a huge uh, genetic variance. I, re- I mean, regardless, right? But I mean, if you look at like you look at power lifters who who transition to bodybuilding, right? So these are guys who've been lifting heavy, mm-hmm. very strong, lots of compound lifts. And they move over to bodybuilding, and what are the what are the areas that they typically will lack? Arms. Yep. It's usually arms, right? Yeah. Because they, they didn't explode. they didn't do a lot of uh, isolation and volume for the arms because of powerlifting. Mm-hmm. So I think regardless, you'll value from you'll, you'll yeah, excuse e- me you'll, you'll get value from doing a little bit more volume and frequency. But you got to modify the intensity. Yeah, I definitely think there's there's both. Like it, both provide value, and and I think that in, incorporating both, like especially doing like the gross motor movements, and then uh, you know like adding the frequency with isolation movements. Uh, obviously, that's like a, a favorite recipe of mine. Uh, but yeah, I do, there, there's there's the opposite too. Like there's people that only stick with um, you know doing isolation movements all the time and doing bodybuilder style training, but then all of a sudden they'll they'll do you know heavy pull ups, they'll do mm-hmm. deadlifts, and all of a sudden like their arms get affected like they've never got affected before. Right. So it's just I, I think it's just introducing a new variable in the mix that really gets them to respond. And by the way, this is how Maps Aesthetic is designed, right? So we have three foundational days, which uh, are mostly your compound lifts where you're kind of hitting the entire body. And then you have two days a week that are focus sessions. And the focus sessions are designed to be moldable for the person. So if buys and tries are the area that you want to develop up your arms, then you would have focus sessions where you're doing a lot of these isolation exercises on those other two days. So you have the all the compound lifts you normally do. And then so the, all they are are volume builders that we've built into the programming. And it's customizable to the person based off of what areas that you want to develop on your body. So if it's your arms, your shoulders, doesn't matter what muscle, you pick the muscle and then we show you how to build it into the program. That's That program was designed for somebody who has a question like this where they're like, hey, I want to mm. bring up a body part and that's how you do it. In fact, if you go to mindpumpfree.com, there's a guide there. It's free on how to build uh, bigger arms. So you can just download it. It's totally free. And we go into a little more detail on some of the things you do to help develop your arms. Next question is from Body by HK. What do you think of trainers using unstable surfaces to train compound movements? For example, barbell back squat or on wobble pillows or a BOSU ball. So when <laughs> when these unstable surfaces, I remember specifically, because I've been in fitness long enough to, to remember these being introduced into, into fitness. So when I first started working as a trainer, you didn't see any of this stuff at all. You didn't even see a physio ball. It just didn't exist. <laughs> yeah, this gym. exploded after uh, you know certain certifications were promoting it. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, they came into the scene, and they didn't just come into the scene. They took over. And, yeah. and then, it, then it was like every exercise on an unstable surface because it makes every exercise more effective. So they went too far in the other direction. Now, I think we're a little bit more balanced. 
do unstable surfaces provide value? They do. There's some value for sure. Um, they could teach you. They slow your form down. They could teach you to activate your core and your posture. Mm -hmm. um, it's, of course, a different type of movement. So recruits muscles differently. It does improve balance uh, specifically on when you're standing on unstable surfaces because it's pretty specific. So I see value, but I don't. The value is specific. In other words. It doesn't replace the value of doing heavy, no. both feet on the flat floor. This comp. is the very bottom of the pyramid. This mm -hmm. is this is what you build upon. Like, I, if there's issues with stability, then there's massive value in introducing unstable surfaces in order to regain that and feel, uh, you know, how you need to recruit to be able to stabilize properly. Uh, but uh, I mean, for the most part, I, I would use this with clients with body weight. And, uh, you know, if I'm really trying to, to specifically address an issue, like that's where I, I find a lot of value in that. Adding load to it, you're going to have to make a good argument for me to really accept that that's, you know, something that's of value uh, for the person. Well, I also want to caution you uh, to falling for into this trap of, and I, and I feel like this is really common in the, the trainer space. We get a look, we read uh, a few books, we get some national certifications, we, we come fresh out of college, so we have some knowledge. And and then we see things and we like to pick it apart and mm -hmm. critique what you know Jane is doing over there with her trainer. Like, oh my, and scoff at it. I can't believe they're training on that. that and that's so stupid and that makes no. Sense. And here's the thing: like, uh, you don't know what that person is training for specifically, and there there is a, an application for almost any weird kind of thing that we've seen before. And I've learned now to not judge. When I see stuff like that, because I don't, I'm not in the trainer's head. Like I don't know what their desired outcome of of that is. I think uh, Sal nailed it that it's very specific, but you don't know that person could be what that specific thing mm -hmm. is for, and that that might be related to what they're trying to accomplish. And you know, I've done enough weird things for clients that I'm sure somebody looked at me and judged, but they have no idea what I'm trying to do. You know, uh, Phil Daru made that comment when we were we were just interviewing him recently when he gets people that are all these coaches and they're critiquing. It's like, you don't know my athlete. Mm -hmm. You don't know them the way I know them. I've seen them move and I've seen them compete for the last three years and there's very little specific things I'm trying to get them. And maybe this thing translates into that, mm -hmm. even though for general population and muscle building and strength, this looks ridiculous. It mm -hmm. looks stupid. It doesn't make sense. But because I have a very specific goal in mind that I or, or desired outcome with this person, uh, I do want to train that. So just be careful if you're a coach and a trainer and you're asking questions like this or you're judging other trainers that are doing that because you don't know these things, don't fall in that trap of yeah. assuming that you do. I had a... Uh, um a surfer and a skateboarder and, and I would train them. And so this was one of those things they were trying to improve their, uh, the way that they react and, and stabilize and balance like quickly. So there was some weird elements involved with that mm -hmm. too. So to your point, uh, you know, and specificity was definitely, uh, the reason for that. So yeah, you know, there are instances out there for sure. Yeah. My, my favorite tool of all the unsta unstable tools is just a physio ball. Uh, physio ball is the, is, is the most useful in my opinion, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of value in using the physio ball for, for certain people. I mean, our, our MAP starter program uses quite a bit of the physio ball. And it's, I mean, this, this is how you want to start working out. T teaches you proper form, gets you to activate properly, stabilize properly, and then progressing from there to more traditional lifts. I mean, it's a great transition. I mean, I would take it a step further and even say unilateral training. I mean, that's great stability. If you're doing one arm, one leg, anything, uh, the stability that you get just from doing unilateral training is sure. phenomenal. So you don't even necessarily need to take it to having tools. Like to me, that's even more uh, regressing it even further back is just getting to the place where you can do use every limb independently by itself and stabilize the major joints. That right there in itself is a great place. Mm -hmm. But again, we don't know uh, what the trainer is, what their desired outcome, what their potential sport is or goal of the client. So be careful. Next question is from Magnetic Beauty 101. Because of COVID, I've been doing a lot of walking outside. You guys always talk about cardio and how it hinders muscle gain. Is there such a thing as too much walking hurting gains? Um, you know, I mean, technically, yeah. Uh, you could do anything too much. It can start to take away from your body's uh, ability or desire to adapt in a specific way. And muscle building is an adaptation. 
Uh, but with walking, it's a much lower risk than if you're doing like running or cycling or swimming. And also, there is uh, there definitely is a time that walking can improve your body's ability to build muscle. I mean, if you're sedentary completely all day long, like a lot of us are, a lot of us are sedentary all day long, introducing walking uh, will improve your health and, and could improve your body's ability to build muscle. I know mm-hmm. this is true for me. If I just lift weights and do no cardio whatsoever, I don't build muscle as well as if I lift weights and do some cardio to improve my health. So there's a sweet spot, and you're going to have to kind of figure that out for yourself. Yes, technically you could walk too much, uh, but what that number is or what that amount is is going to be different. I think that would person. be difficult to do, don't you? And and explain to Salman, mean, you probably explain this better than I, I can, is how, how our body utilizes energy, right? So if you, if you have 20 pounds of body fat on you, that you have stored energy on, on your body. And if you run out of uh, sugar, if your body runs out of glycogen to utilize as fuel, its next source, it will tap into fat. Uh, the idea of it starting to metabolize uh, muscle is not something the body wants to do. The only reason why it would go there if it's being forced to go there, yeah. which would be, and that's where like cardio or exercise really comes in when you're that low of calories. So let's say you're in a very depleted state. You don't, you know, you don't have any, you're in a, you've been in a deficit calorie deficit because you're trying to lose body fat. Uh, you've been walking around like crazy. And then you decide you want to push the body and you want to go run or you want to do like an intense circuit or whatever, that's where we, we're we most likely at risk of the body starting to metabolize. Yeah, but even that's rare, right? It's it's pretty rare for the body to metabolize uh, muscle. You have to be really starve yourself uh, mm-hmm. to do that. Really, the reason why you lose muscle when you do too much cardio is because your body's always trying to get better at what you do a lot of, okay? And the strength and endurance... They can be synergistic, but at some point they start to compete. So if you want to become a better endurance machine, that means you want to become efficient with energy and you don't want to have too much muscle. You don't need a lot of strength for a lot of endurance, number one. It burns up a lot of energy and and endurance training tends to burn a lot of calories. Your body becomes a more efficient machine. You reduce muscle mass and you become better at cardio. When you're trying to build strength, then it's less concerned about becoming energy efficient and it's more concerned about building strength, which requires a lot of muscle. So imagine if you had a car that was like an AI car um, that could adapt according to, you know, depending on what you do with the car. If I drive that, that AI car at 30 miles an hour, but I drive for 15 hours a day, it's going to turn itself into a one cylinder engine car, burn very, very little, you know, fuel. And I'm not going very fast. I'm only going 30 miles an hour. So that's what's going to turn to you. But what if all I do with that car is a drag race it twice a day? You know, mm-hmm. it's going to develop in, in, into a, you know, 10 cylinder engine, very big power, burn a lot of energy. So this is what happens. So you're sending competing signals to the body at some point and your body's going to choose kind of, so you, you so you can either become a, a jack of all trades, you know, mm-hmm. if you, if you, do a lot of strength so training. A hybrid approach. Yeah, a lot of strength training, a lot of endurance training. Lot. Then you'll get some muscle, some endurance. Or you could do all endurance or mostly endurance and uh, very little strength, but lots of endurance. Or you could do lots of strength training where you build more muscle, not so much endurance. At some point, they're synergistic, but then again, at some point, they start to compete. And that's, uh, you know, there's a lot of variables that come into play. Walking is not one of the ones I'm, I'm worried about. You'd have to walk a lot typically yeah. to make that happen. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Next question is from Melissa Noft. If women account for 50% of gym memberships and the population in general, and strength training is so important, why don't gyms try to make efforts to entice women to lift? Oh, well, yeah. that's funny because what... Well, Hasn't that well, been the initiative? Well, well first of all, wait, wait, hold on. What, is, what is enticing women to lift... Uh, the way it's look like. Does it look like painting the machines purple like they've yeah. tried in the past? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, is that, well, is that what you're looking for? You know what? They've tried. And they're right. This is true now. They're, they're, it, women make up 50% of the population, but actually it's are not- a majority of the consumer population. Like women are the consumers uh, uh, you know, of the population. They do a lot of the purchases. They have most of the buying power. It's totally true. Um, and gyms have attracted women, but it's but they've attracted women with group exercise classes, mm-hmm. yoga classes, and cardio. And they, they've tried attracting women with resistance training, but it hasn't worked. Now, it's working more nowadays because the information coming out is more accurate. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of 
myth that we've had to overcome. Like that muscle, you know, strength training builds big, bulky muscles, that it makes you look manly, that if you want a long, lean, toned physique, you need to do lots of cardio in classes and stay away from the weights. That's It takes a long time to erase that. Well, yeah, so there's a lot of stigma still around yes. that. Yeah. And, and two, like the environment itself, it's like they, they've tried really hard to kind of like tone down a lot of the aggressive kind of, uh, you know, vibe when you go into the weight room itself because the weight room itself was always a bit intimidating even for your average person, even guys, you know, just coming in uh, and let alone, you know, women coming in to try and like do their thing. Yeah. So um, I think there's a lot of work still needs to be done with that, but I think there has been a lot of thought and focus around at least putting the information out so women realize like how much more effective, uh, you know, they right. could they could make their workouts towards their goal. Well, there's a couple of things I want to address. One, I don't understand what the get get some representation here means. What would you guys' answer to that? Like, what would what would you I do to she, to represent? I think what she's saying is is why don't gyms, knowing that there's half their members are women Got or it. more, okay, why aren't they making the weight rooms? More attractive to women. Well, that's my point. So, what does that look like? Tra painting it fucking purple? What are well, you saying? What, what would isn't make it, it the machines are are because there was like some machines that you couldn't like you know for people that were smaller in, in general like they would like you know some of the machines weren't set up you know to to, no. to favor that but like I don't I don't see any that's other, what I'm, I'm what I'm trying to challenge you both in okay yeah, <laughs> that you're not addressing is what how, how would a gym do that to give women a better representation? I don't understand I, that. without being condescending. Right, that's, exactly. That's yeah. and that's my point. Yeah. I, I'm by the way I'm being sarcastic when I say painted purple. Right. I know that's sexist. I would never say that, that that thing is a good idea, but that's what I think. That's how they pandered to women in the past is by changing the color of the machine, the same goddamn machine a guy's lifting on the in the other room that's green. So yeah, yeah. what would they do to give you a better representation? That's my first thing. And then the second thing I'll address in this is, uh, you know, it takes me to my conversation this last weekend where I was with our marketing team, and he's constantly reminding me that, you are the minority, Adam. You are not the majority. You you having the understanding of like how people should exercise and why strength training is so important to women, you are a sliver of what the majority think. 99% mm -hmm. of women still think that lifting heavy weights and squatting and deadlifting is not ideal for them. Mm -hmm. So I that you got to understand that still like you, this the person who's asking this question uh you're not that that group you are obviously aware of it and I think that what we're doing with this show and have been trying to do for the last six years is to shift that conversation. Mm -hmm. And that's what inspired us because we saw the opportunity because there's not a lot of people that were yeah. speaking to women about strength training and the importance Look, of it. Look, I manage gyms for long, big box gyms. Like th these are the kind of gyms that mm -hmm. are the mainstream gyms, right? So these weren't bodybuilder gyms. They were just mainstream fitness facilities. And it was pretty rare that a new member, a female new member, would come in and ask uh, to see the weight room because that's what she was most right. interested in. Cardio or the group X. Right. So so the gyms really are just reflecting the market uh, that's demand. Right. Yeah. So, but it's changing, okay? Because when I first started 20-something years ago, uh, you saw one woman in the weight room or none. Um, now you're start, it looks like 20% yeah. uh, of them. Are, so it's increased quite a bit, and it's continuing to increase. As that gets... Uh, becomes a bigger portion, or, or is that, is that some, something that they demand and want? Then you start to see gyms start to change uh, a, a little bit, or maybe not change at all. Yeah, just I was going to more women in there. I was going to say, I don't see, I don't see a gym changing the the structure of it or the I don't know maybe the the conversation around it maybe the commer and maybe that's what you're asking me right now. Maybe like uh, when you like right now when we watch. Um, TV and you get like a maybe a 24 hour fitness or a you yeah. know why why aren't there more women like you know squatting 225 on in the commercial or something mm -hmm. like I get that like maybe that's what you're looking for and I and I look forward to the day that you see more but, of that yeah more of a cultural portrayal of a lot of women <laughs> lifting weights as opposed to always doing cardio I mean I don't really know that yeah it's going to come from uh, uh you know outside sources coming into the gym I don't think the gym is really going to be able to like structure that well now. I think no. here's another thing I, we've uh, given given CrossFit uh, lots of credit. Here's another place where, you know, I think they've done a good job here. Right. I think that you see the, a, a lot of uh, women with great bodies that do CrossFit and they lift heavy ass weight. And yeah. so they, they've done a good job of representing representing women lifting heavy weight. Yeah, you know, this is, uh, so this is kind of behind that the, the book that I've been, you know, putting together and writing in is, is really talking about uh, some of the damage that's been caused 
to people's health because resistance training is not there's it's still got this kind of aura around it where oh it's for for guys who want to build a lot of muscle or bodybuilders i mean let's take the, the conversation even further right yes women feel this way but just even mainstream average person the average person when they think about exercise if they go to the doctor and the doctor says hey you need to go work out they don't think to themselves that they should go lift weights. That's not mm -hmm. the first thing that pops in their no, mind. No. They think I'm going to go swim or yeah, run. Go run. Even or... though the evidence, the evidence is actually quite clear now that if you had to pick one form of exercise, resistance training is superior. It's just superior, especially when you consider the context of modern life. And even if you consider everybody's goals, if you're older, oh, I want to strengthen my bones and move more, move better. What's the best form of exercise for that resistance training? Oh, I I want to, I just want to lose weight. I want to I want to lose weight and I need a faster metabolism. Resistance training is the best form of exercise. I want to get stronger and build muscle. Obviously, resistance training. So I think I, I hope that soon we're going to start to make that shift where that becomes the de facto you know form of exercise. It's the one that the d default form of exercise that people turn to. But I mean, I get why it happened. The The original people that showed people what resistance training was all about were bodybuilders. So of course- yeah. It's taking know, a while. Yeah, yeah. it's going to take a while. It was like Arnold, you yeah. know? We and just then, gotta need more examples. We just need, yeah, we need better examples. That's a, that's a good thing to say. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on social media, Instagram, Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. And finally, if you'd like to get some free fitness information, some guides on how to get a better squat or build better arms or get a better butt, go to mindpumpfree.com. We have tons of guides on there and they're all totally free. I did see this a lot. At least I got DMs from people that this happened to, which is kind of losing sight of their fitness goals or in general, just losing sight of their fitness. And a lot of the, the reasons I got for this was uh, gyms are closed. Oh, mm -hmm. well, the gym's closed, so now I'm not going to work out. Or people say, I just, I just don't feel like it. Uh, 